Hey everybody, Jim from Jim's Holius and Coleus. You know, I've been growing Coleus for well over 10 years now. And you know, every year is a surprise. And every year I have a favorite Coleus, uh, whether it's a small one uh, or a jumbo Coleus. Uh, and here's a few over the years that I've grown. And it's just wonderful that I have pictures to relive and look at them and I'm like, wow, that was so beautiful. I hope I can grow that again. But what happens is every year, I grow a little something else. Um, not necessarily planning on it, but knowing the, the different type of coleus that I really love. And if I'm lucky enough to get a really, really healthy coleus. And this year is no different. Um, I'm going to show you real quick. Um, this wizard rose. Now, if you're following along, you're probably going to be, um, you're going to recognize this coleus. This there's basically going to be four generations. This is a single rooting that I took a few years ago and just potted it and took cuttings and rootings and replanted them over the years, and I managed to get a really strong. Um, plant and, and that's probably one of the most exciting things about coleus if you're not aware if you're new to coleus or whatever is that you can take a cutting of a stem put it in water root it and then replant it and make a whole new plant a clone of that plant and that's what I've done exactly with this coleus I'm going to feature on this video today it's a it's really in the Kong family it's a wizard rose but it's got a, um, it's got some kind of cross pollination going with sort of a jitters or like a Spitfire Chipotle. It's just, it looks like a fireworks, and it's such a healthy, healthy coleus. So I'm going to go over, and I'm going to actually cut four or five rootings because these are just, they. I have the mother plant from two years ago, and then I have the offspring from last year and some rootings that I took from last year also in pots that are growing very well and I again another pot that's just exploded so I got like grandkids here I guess if you want for lack of a better term uh, of the same coleus from the same plant from two or three years ago so uh, what I'm gonna do now because the, the one to two of them actually the, the grandmother I guess we can call it and the mother are so overgrown now I don't want to just trim them I'm gonna make some more rootings um, I like to wet root I like, I like to put my rootings into water get the roots growing or cuttings for lack of you know um, cuttings I like to put them in the water let them root and then pot them you can you don't have to do that you can skip that if you like you can actually take a rooting or cutting of a stem and put it in moist soil and it will root but I tend to like to go to the water route for myself and then have roots to pop but that's just my preference so anyway let's go and make a fourth I don't know fifth generation bunch of rootings cutting rootings from this beautiful beautiful wizard rose fireworks coleus Okay, so here we are. This is um, two years old. Um, but it wasn't always this size. This was a cutting of a from a plant from three years ago that I put in water, rooted it, and replanted. And I overwintered a small coleus in a plastic pot and I have that pot here I'm going to show you that in a minute but that's this plant was this size when I took it from the mother the grandmother I guess from three years ago and this thing has been outside 
for a month and a half or so and it's really going crazy and I took a bunch of cuttings from this and rooted them and put those rootings into this monster which is the grand I guess the the child offspring this is that if you're following along if you remember I bought these little ceramic uh, pots from a local artisan here's the other one not to get off the beaten track but here's the other one that says seaside and this is doing spectacularly also we're gonna get to that in a few minutes but I don't want I have to trim this but I I really want to make some uh, rootings some cuttings and actually I'm getting some seed stalk so I want I want the seeds to this so I'm going to let this seed seeing this thing is seeding already I'm gonna uh, let this seed let it get pollinated and harvest the seeds to this so I can get seeds uh, so I imagine I'm gonna get plenty of seeds from this so I, I will have them on my Jim's coleus uh, seed sale in the uh, fall on my eBay listing, Jim's Coleus, so I'll have the seeds to this. So um, it will, they should be pure uh, because I, I don't have any other Coleus seeding, so there's no other Coleus that are going to cross pollinate to this. Uh, so I'm keeping it away from others. Uh, but again, there's no other Coleus, there's no other Coleus plant seeding at this time, so. Any insects that pollinate this are just going to be going from this this seed stalk to this seed stalk only. So uh, I imagine we'll get um, some pretty pure seeds. So we're going to take some cuttings from this, and I'm going to root them in water, and I'm also going to put one in moist soil. So again, here are some more cuttings from this grandmother plant, I guess you want to say, that I potted, that were actually cuttings over this past winter, fall and winter, that I potted. And this is growing pretty well. And here's another one also. So I'm gonna make up a bunch more of these, but before I do that, I need to get, uh, get going and cut some stems and put them into the water here okay so uh we have a really windy day it was you know the past few days like there a lot of the united states we got really hot weather but um again i'm fortunate to be so close to this, the water that we're always about 10 degrees cooler here so it's been in the mid 80s and so forth but we're getting a really we're getting some gusty gusty winds here so i had a lot of my plants down below my plant my uh, workshop table here to protect them and i put a, a lot of them that were taller uh like that mother plant and so forth in the greenhouse just to protect them so but anyway here we are we're gonna we're gonna make some clones up so uh you can see this this thing needs to be trimmed but before we trim it even though now if you let your plant continue to see how I see these seed stalks growing if I allow this whole plant to develop seed stalks it's gonna eventually die or, or really degrade because all of the energy that it takes to nourish the plant the roots the stems and all the leaves the foliage gets diverted to the seed stalk to, to um, to grow the seed stalks, to develop the seed stalks. It takes a lot of energy away from the rest of the plant, which that's basically the colea signaling itself that it's time to renew. And that's why they're considered perennials because they reseed themselves in, the, in nature, in the wild. So if you don't want seeds from your coleus, then just pick the seed stalks before they develop like this, you'll start to see them. Or if you like these, if you like these little lilac petals then you can let two or three i mean a plant this big can withstand having two or three or four coleus stems developing if you really like it a lot of people there's a, there was an article i read years ago about 
that very subject, uh, colia seed stems, do I do I trim them? Are they part of the plant or the love of the plant because of the of the um, the flowers, these beautiful lilac flowers? So that's up to you. But again, uh, this one I'm gonna just gonna let it go all out and seed stalk and get as many seeds as I can from it because I have so many of its offspring already. So anyway. We can see here this thing is really overgrown. It needs, and I've been trimming this, folks. I mean, I've, every time I come out here, I'm trimming away here. So I'm going to trim a lot of these big leaves. But right now, what I want to do is take a look and see what good candidates there are for trimming. And I'm not, you know, honestly, I'm not worried whether or not I make a quote mistake because there are no mistakes, as Bob Ross says in, in nature. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to try to look and see what's a good uh, stem. A good plant, um, a good a good stem to cut as a cutting, and you know I'm kind of leaning towards these on the bottom here, um, but they're, these are really hard. I mean I can't believe the size of these. Things. So what I'm going to do just to start things off, I'm going to I'm going to go down as far as I can, and that doesn't really matter at this point where, as long as you got a decent stem, and I'm just going to. You don't want these leaves in the water, even here. Oh, we got a little damaged leaf there. So, got these here. So I'm just gonna just gonna plop that in and wet root it. And this, in this weather, I I would say in about three days the roots will start to form. I'm gonna give this a week until I really get. I don't need a, a huge root bowl, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it some time to root, and then we'll put it in a pot. We'll put it in soil, and then uh, another few weeks we'll have a good good plant. Maybe uh, it might take some time to get it this big, but that's my goal. A lot of wind here today, so. Um, you know what I think what I'll do is just trim a few of these big leaves. These big leaves are going to go anyway on the rooting when I when I do get rootings. But I'm just going to look around and see if I get... I don't want a really thick, thick cutting if I can. But I I don't know. This, this plant I don't think is going to leave me much of a choice. I'm looking down into the plant itself and choosing a, a stem that's... A decent size but not too too thick and that, that's my preference really so I don't have big big pots I want to put these in the four inch nursery pot so I don't want a big big rooting so we're gonna cut these here you know you don't want really any foliage going in the water and this will be another plant just put it in water and uh, keep by a bright window. Doesn't have to have direct sun. Put it in a bright window, and you will see in two, three days, maybe, you know, uh, you'll start to see the roots form out of that. And you know what? Once you do see, say in two days, you start seeing roots forming, then you can go ahead and put it right into a pot. So I got the whole uh, already dug here. Um, so you could do that. You can just trim. Uh, you can just root it. Once your roots start to show up, just pop it right into uh, the soil. Okay, let's see over here. Here we go. This looks like a nice one here. I'm not worried. I'm not really worried about trimming too much off of this monster because this thing is off the hook crazy. This thing is just wild. Yeah, that fantastic so you know what I'm gonna do folks I'm gonna I'm gonna put this right into a pot now don't waste your money on root hormone root hormone has its uses and I'm not gonna get into it but to me root hormone on coleus using root hormone to root coleus in, in soil is a waste of money because this does not need anything to promote root growth 
except for moisture so there we go I have the hole dug and I'm just gonna put the coleus stem right in the in in the uh, in the soil and water and there is some miracle grow shake and feed cole um, plant food mixed into this soil so there you go so maybe you're asking then then why root why are you going to put them in why waste the time putting them in water well there's two reasons why i do it number one my main reason is i love doing it i like i like having these rootings in my in my living room window and also to show you because you can keep rootings in water i mean if you love rootings like i do cuttings rootings then you can keep them anytime. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be in the spring or over. It doesn't have to be over fall and winter like I do. You can keep them all the time. Like a, like going out to the store and buying uh, cut flowers. So this is really just to show you how you could take a beautiful, uh, beautiful coleus like this and just keep cuttings and just generation after generation and keep that coleus going so that's exactly how I've kept my Lord Voldemort coleus which I I can no longer find that's how I've kept the same Lord Voldemort coleus plant going for almost I don't know I lost count of the years six seven years now I've had the same cuttings and rootings over the years and I do it the same exact way by taking lots of cuttings off of the mother plant creating new pots wet rooting them and then planting them into the pot and speaking of that Lord Voldemort coleus I if you're following along you know I've kept numerous Lord Voldemort cuttings rootings over fall and winter and I planted about five of them in the pot out in one of my outdoor planters uh, about a month ago month and a half so let's go and take a look and see how that's progressing and it looks really good okay so here we got folks you can see look at how healthy this lord voldemort coleus looks now you can see why i love it so much it's got such rich black and gold contrast and look at this thing how this is filling out and again this is so this is the seventh generation I, I believe I bought the first one about seven years ago so this is a seventh generation and I, I can't get seeds that there are some coleus that do not go to seed uh, I've tried I, I did manage to get this two or three years ago some of the seed stalks to, to, to develop very late in the fall but they weren't mature enough so I do what I do every year and I'll do that with this one as well is I'll take at least seven six or seven cuttings so I can guarantee I'll always have this plant because these root these root very well these make very good cuttings because they're so hardy they're just very very hardy coleus but you can see this is well on its way. Summer has just begun. And before you know it, it's going to be just like its mother plant right here. Okay, so before we close, we're going to take a look at this. This is beautiful. That's definitely a cross. That's a cross pollination. I'm going to say of jitters that I had and a colossal marble, I want to say. Um, so, uh, uh, you bet I'm going to be taking some rootings of this, but you can see this is a beautiful planter. You can see how windy it is. It's, it's really gusty, uh, but it, it's, uh, this is well rooted, this plant. It's, it's strong and I don't keep them terribly high. Um, here is zinnias. These I grew in the arrow garden. If you're following along, you see how they're already well established uh, there's another zinnia 
And here are the monster pots, soon to be monster pots. There's a Saturn, a mosaic. There's a Saturn um, that I uh, that I rooted from last year. So you can see it slowly coming in. Look at all that growth, it's just exploding. And there's a Saturn rings. And I have a bunch of peppers. And there's another coleus. And these I sell at the farmer's market. These won't be sold until later, uh, probably in another month and a half or so when they're really big. Those are my feature plants. And here's a bunch of um, cuttings. Here's some of the seeds of the Saturn's rings that I got. So I have these out, and these love sun, so I've been I just keep these out on the deck. And a lot of them this year, I've been keeping them out on the deck here uh, because they really benefit. And I'll only bring them into sh for shelter if we get a really heavy storm. Okay, so I hope uh, hope you enjoyed that. So try it out; it's really fun. It's not difficult, you know. So if you don't want to do the water rooting, you want to go right to pots. You could do that. Honestly, I ha I don't really I haven't really done that any more than a few times, if that. And uh, I may not have had some success uh, uh, with that. But you just have to make sure if you're going to take cuttings of a of a coleus stem and you're going to go direct into soil, make sure the the soil is moist. It has to stay moist. Otherwise, that's the only way it's going to to root. So the, it's whether it's um, water direct or moist soil it's the moisture in the soil the moisture in the jar is going to promote the roots to form from the stem you can argue you can root a coleus in a, on a, a moist paper towel if you keep the paper towel moist that's how prolific they are they just they really root very very quickly so uh, lots of beautiful beautiful coleus here I love these wizard I don't know what we're gonna call them wizard starbursts maybe uh, starburst Kongs I don't know what do you know give give me a give me some ideas what do we want to call these wizards uh, star give me give me a, give me some insight guys what do you think put a comment below on what you think we should call these beautiful coleus okay so enjoy the summer it's just getting started believe it or not and this is a fantastic year this is probably the best spring we've had here um, my plants are doing fantastic I had my first sale last week which was an early sale I did pretty well and then we have our the farmers market that I do here in New Jersey every Thursday I'm looking forward to that um, but it's been a great spring and I'm hoping the summer is as well so thanks for following everybody Enjoy your summer and stay tuned. We'll be uh, more to come. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment or get in touch with me over on Instagram. Uh, just to let everybody know, if any of you are following me on Facebook, my Facebook page was hacked severely. And I am trying to get in touch with Facebook, which is like almost impossible. So I cannot get access to my Facebook page. I really don't use it as often. I link it with my Instagram. But if you need to get in touch with me, I always suggest Instagram or YouTube or, again, through comments on these videos. So, all right. So thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy your summer. And, of course, we'll be shooting uh, some more videos as the summer progresses. So take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Jim's Holy Sacopius.